Hi, welcome to Steve Chats Wrestling, hashtag SCW right here on YouTube.com. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. You can subscribe right now. I'd like to thank everybody who has subscribed so far. I'm over 50 subscribers now. Very, very grateful and very thankful as well. Hopefully I can continue to give you the content that you want on this channel going forward. And uh, remember you can comment on this video and I really want you to as well. This is the Battleground preview and predictions video. And I'll give it maybe a hint of creative as well if I can see maybe a vision, maybe it could be a good idea going forward, how WWE perhaps should do it, uh, rather than maybe what I think will happen. Uh, it could be very interesting indeed, hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Uh, but remember as well, you can please like and share the videos as well. So uh, we're going to basically look at the background card, we're going to look at the pre-show as well. Let's be honest, after the WWE draft this week, it's a bit of a mess. Um, we've got people from Raw facing people from SmackDown. Uh, we have potential changes of championships that could change shows as well, which that could be pretty exciting. But then looking at the people that are actually are contenders for it, uh, it wouldn't make logical sense for those belts to say we could change hands. But we'll go into that in a minute. We'll start with pre-show match, which is a all oh, SmackDown match. Now I'm wondering why they've done this now because there's not a lot of tag teams in the tag team divisions on either Raw or SmackDown. So to give us one match on the pre-show, which are going to be on the same show anyway, seems a bit strange. Now, I'm not saying it's a dream match. I'm not saying we should keep it saved for a big, more important occasion. But it just seems strange when we've got a lot of Raw versus SmackDown matches that we have an all-SmackDown match here involving the Usos versus Bree Zango. Um, it could be very interesting how this is going to go, though. But for me personally, uh, Bree Zango not done too bad. They've won a bit of a role recently. They've won matches rather than been necessarily just losing matches. Um, um, against the Usos, who aren't really necessarily going anywhere, but you think now that perhaps the, the brand splits happen, they're probably going to improve once again in the tag team division and probably going to see more of a, a creditable force going forward. So it's going to be very interesting, and it could really go either way this one, but I'm going to predict that the Usos are going to win this match because I think the Usos now are going to be seen as perhaps the uh, same sort of level of threat as American Alpha are to the tag team titles because you've got the New Day and you've got um, Enzo and Bikaz on Raw, you've now got American Alpha and Usos on SmackDown, so I think that they're going to be like the their big sort of time tag teams going forward, particularly from the face side of things. I would like to see the Usos turn heel actually at some point on SmackDown, but that's not going to happen anytime soon at the moment, particularly unless they're getting a feud with American Alpha. So in the meantime, they're going to be a face. I reckon they will beat Breeze Angle on this pay per view, even though I kind of wouldn't mind seeing Breeze Angle pick up the victory myself. We'll go then to the main show itself, and we're going to start off with the highlight reel. Uh, it's not a match, so this is kind of inevitable what's going to happen. Randy Orton's going to make his return. Uh, of course, being on Chris Jericho's highlight reel, he's going to get asked a lot of questions about Brock Lesnar. Probably going to be told that he's going to be beaten by Brock Lesnar. Probably told he's not still got it and he's not the same viper or something like that. Going to probably say, drink it in, and he's going to receive an RKO out of nowhere or an inevitable RKO that we can see coming from a mile away for Randy Orton to stamp his return. Could this lead to a match on the build at the SummerSlam? Maybe it could, but uh, from what I hear, Chris Jericho is going to be taking a break from WWE very shortly. This could explain why he's not in a proper feud going forward, although I have heard he could be facing Neville at SummerSlam. So um, expect this to be kind of perhaps a one-time gig just to see an RKO back. Randy Orton is back in WWE and ready for the SmackDown roster. So actually, there won't be a match leading up. Actually, they have got that run because Jericho is on Raw, Orton's on SmackDown. So this is going to be just simply a one-time deal. We'll look at championship matches next then, and this is where this could be very interesting because we have The Miz, who is the Intercontinental Champion, and uh, I'm going to do both of these at the same time, by the way, facing Darren Young, who's on the Raw roster. We have Rusev, who's the United States Champion on Raw, facing Zack Ryder, who is a member of the SmackDown roster. So technically, um, if one belt is going to change hands here, both need to change hands for this to kind of seem credible and work because then you'd have like a little bit of a swerve because we kind of feel at the moment oh the Intercontinental title is on Smackdown the US title is on Raw well both shows could actually technically end up with the opposite title come the end of the night and there will be nothing that these guys can do about it purely on the basis that actually uh, they're going to be dropped them different shows so they'll have to go for the other titles instead so you'd perhaps see say hypothetically Darren Young and Zack Ryder won you would see going forward uh, the Intercontinental title maybe Darren Young versus Rusev and the Miz against Zack Ryder that's possibly the way it could go now looking at the matches themselves we'll start then with Rusev versus Zack Ryder 
Rusev has been on a really good roll since becoming United States champion and I think it would be very damaging for him to lose the belt to someone of the level of Zack Ryder. Um, it would not say a lot really for Rusev as a push going forward and definitely after this it would lose a lot of momentum for the Bulgarian brute. So for me personally I think as a logical sense despite the fact it would be fun to see these belts change over sides I think that Rusev is going to pick up the victory here. Looking at The Miz and Darren Young, this one's a little bit more complicated because, again, it's a one-time-off match. It's Raw versus SmackDown. It's the Intercontinental title. Darren Young has just started this new gimmick. He's got Bob Backlund uh, in his corner, making Darren Young great again. Was he great before? Maybe it's arguable. But you know what? Since he's come back and he's been on screen, it's been quite entertaining to watch. It's nice to see the chicken wing. And you know what? I, I'm kind of cool with Darren Young actually uh, doing a right and WWE program. I'm not too much against that. Um, is the chicken wing very close to the Oscar lock, though? I'm just going to throw that little thing out there for you now. What is Oscar going to have to do when she comes to the main roster? Because her submission is very similar to the chicken wing. It pretty much is a chicken wing. So uh, we'll have to see what's going to happen when she eventually does come to the main roster. But that could be, that still could be about another six to 12 months away. So we won't worry about that just yet. But um, looking at the match itself, um, of course, uh, it would make more sense for Darren Young to win. It's a new gimmick. It's a new fresh start going forward. Normally the title changes hands in these situations. But I think Darren Young is going to win the match. But I don't think he's going to win the title. I think there's going to be like a count out or a DQ. It's going to be some sort of false finish. Either that or if the Miz does win, he's going to cheat to win by holding the tights and feet on the ropes or something like that. It's not going to be a clean victory. It's not going to be a clean retain for the Miz. He's either going to lose the belt, uh, not going to lose the belt, but he's going to lose the match uh, via DQ or count out. Or he'll get a very cheap victory. Um, personally for me, I can see that uh, the Miz will probably lose the match, but not the title. That's my prediction for you right there. Um, we'll move on next then for the first of our six-man tag team matches, which is the New Day versus the Wyatt family, which uh, has had an interesting build-up all the way now to the pay-per-view, where now there's been such fear of the Wyatt family, from uh, particularly Xavier Woods, to now find out that uh, the Wyatt family are going to be going their separate ways at the end of this pay-per-view. It really, really grinds me this, um, to be brutally honest, purely on the basis that we're supposed to find this creditable, this match, and now it just seems to have lost all credibility whatsoever for me. Now, there's two ways we can look at this. The White family could either leave on a high note or they're going to leave on a whimper as, as a group. For me, I kind of feel that the New Day are going to be continuing as a team, so it only makes sense for the team to get the victory. I think they'll get the victory over Eric Rowan, uh, that way it will not do too much, too much harm to either Ball Showman or Bray Wyatt. And then we can see Bray Wyatt see, be one of the main characters and people on SmackDown. Braun Strowman can end up doing whatever he does on Raw, whether it's destroying people on Superstars. Maybe a dancing gimmick in four months, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But hopefully it won't be destroyed to that level. Hopefully he'll be seen as a, a monster character, but hopefully not built up too quickly where he's forced down our throats. Uh, give him a chance to develop more as well. Eric Rowan, unfortunately, I can see him on main event permanently. Um, the only way I can see a fix for Eric Rowan uh, to actually perhaps save his WWE career in six months' time is when Luke Harper comes back and maybe they can actually form a team on SmackDown. And maybe then uh, on this yo-yo of the White family, maybe it will reform as the original three rather than having Braun Strowman in it. Because Braun Strowman, for me, it hasn't worked. But again, I think that's WWE's fault of why that hasn't worked, uh, to be brutally honest. Uh, with the White family, you look at it, I mean, they came in as a family, they messed it up, then put Bray on his own, they messed it up, they put the White family back together, they've messed it up, and now they're going to be individual again. So we're going to have to be very interested to see where that goes, but I think that they're going to lose this match uh, at uh, the Battleground, New Day will pick up the victory, this will then lead the New Day into SummerSlam, longest reigning tag team champions of all time, beating um, Brian Kendrick and Paul London's record, and then we can wait and see what happens from there, perhaps the next challengers might be the club. And we'll see what happens there at SummerSlam. But anyway, we move on. Uh, for our next six-man tag team match, we have uh, John Cena and Enzo and Kaz versus AJ Styles and the club. Now, very interesting once again, because this is now Raw and SmackDown element. Both teams are going to be split. I mean, Cena and Enzo and Kaz are not really a team anyway, but they'll be going their separate ways after this match. The club will be split as well. AJ Styles, uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson will be split. Whereas AJ Styles and SmackDown will have um, the club members of Gallows and Anderson on Raw. Now, a very interesting tweet has been sent out from AJ Styles saying that people think that the club are actually finished, that we're actually just expanding. Banding. That was a very interesting tweet. Could we about to get two forms of the club 
on Raw and SmackDown. Of course, Gallows and Anderson are going to be on Raw. This means that they're going to be with Finn Balor, which means the Banner Club are going to be introduced. Are we going to get people on SmackDown? To join AJ Styles. I mean, of course, there have been rumours of interest in the likes of Adam Cole, who is a part of the actual Bullet Club. I mean, they're looking to recruit as well. Could we see? Could we see the Young Bucks? I don't think that's going to happen, but I would love to see them involved. I mean, that would be a, a fantastic route to go. Would they look for actually bringing people in house in to uh, AJ Styles' form of the club? I mean, there's been rumours before of the likes of Samoa Joe or Shinsuke Nakamura eventually being a part of what is WWE's version of the club and making it a big group. I mean, if it was split over two brands as well to come together for a big group on the main shows like SummerSlam, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, Survivor Series, that would be very interesting. I think that could work as well. I mean, it would be almost like a, an NWO split in half but actually coming together for the, for the big four. I mean, that would be very exciting and I could see that really working. So I, I'm kind of up for that idea if that happens. Um, but uh, in the meantime, anyway... It's going to be the last time that we see AJ Styles, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson as the original members of the club uh, of WWE's form of it anyway. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. I think that they're going to continue building towards the uh, John Cena AJ Styles feud. For me, it kind of makes sense here that with AJ Styles winning on the last pay-per-view that John Cena gets some form of redemption. So I'm expecting Cena to pick up the victory here, potentially over either Anderson or Gallows. This way we'll see uh, John Cena and Enzo and Big Cass picking up the victory here. And this can then lead them towards their continue their program towards SummerSlam, which I'll come back to a bit later on. Next then we're going to look at women's action then. And we've got Becky Lynch versus Natalia. Now both are on SmackDown from the WWE Draft, which makes uh, interesting reading. Because does this mean that we are now going to get... Um, uh, a basic a return match from these two. Is this a one-time gig or is it not? Rumours might suggest that uh, with them being both on SmackDown, maybe it might not be. So maybe Natalia might pick up the victory here on this particular occasion. But uh, I am, personally, for me, I'm, I'm going to still stick my neck out and say Becky Lynch because she's going to be the face of the SmackDown women's roster. Um, so I'm going to say that even though Natalia could win and it would make sense if they're going to continue the feud going forward, Becky Lynch is going to be the ultimate winner from this feud. So um, I'm going to hope it's a one-time gig for now and I'm going to stick my neck out and say Becky Lynch will win the match. So there we have it. Um, we then look then to the uh, the Alpha Women's match. It's a tag team match. We've got the champion Charlotte and Dana Brooke from Raw facing Sasha Banks from Raw and a mystery partner. And this is going to lead towards SummerSlam. Um, obviously, uh, we're going to have the Sasha Banks versus Charlotte match at SummerSlam. I predict that Sasha Banks will win the match, whoever her partner is, and she will defeat Charlotte. And this will then lead to where we have to have the title match at SummerSlam. Now, who is going to be the mystery partner then? Uh, there's a lot of rumours it could be Bailey. I'm wondering if it could be Nikki Bella. Now, I'm not sure that's necessarily what fans are going to want, but uh, with Nikki Bella, I mean, she could come part as over the Raw roster, but more likely she could be a part of the SmackDown roster because John Cena's on the SmackDown roster. So she could turn up in a SmackDown t-shirt uh, or whatever or be just be part of this match and then be on SmackDown from next week. We'll have to wait and see. She's technically right now a free agent. Um, but yeah, I, I think that Nikki Bella could be the way that they're going to go purely on the basis that um, with Bailey uh, right now, as much as I'd love to see her come up, uh, rumour has it that WWE does not want her interfering with the idea of the Sasha Banks Charlotte match. They don't want the attention taken away from that. Now, it's going to be a major buzzkill, though, if it's not Bailey at this event. I think fans are going to want it. And if it is going to be Bailey, this should be the first match of the night because it will really get the crowd going. It will really set the tone for the night of the way it should be set. But. Um, I'm not 100% convinced that it's going to be the way they're going to go. I think they're going to leave it to the after SummerSlam, the night after SummerSlam. I think Bailey will make her debut then because Bailey, as well as potentially have a match with Oscar at the next NXT TakeOver, be her last time at uh, Brooklyn 2 uh, going for the NXT Women's Championship. And it would kind of make sense as well because uh, who would Oscar face if Bailey wasn't there now? Because we've now seen the likes of Nia Jax, Alexa Bliss, Carmella all called up to the main roster. Even Marie now is definitely a main part of the SmackDown female roster as well. So it looks like for me that there's no really other competitors for Oscar for this match. Now, of course, Bailey could do both, so I'm not going to rule it out, but um, I can't see it being anyone else. Um, although I have seen a rumor that. And Ric Flair could be involved in this Charlotte feud somewhere with Sasha Banks. It would be really bizarre if Ric Flair was to come out and be involved in this in some way or fashion. But um, I'm going to stick my neck out and say it will be Nikki Bella. 
We'll move on next then for Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, and these two are literally going to fight forever. They're on the same roster. Um, the thing is that this feud writes itself, and it was built up really well up to payback. It's kind of had a bit of a, a break for a short time. Now they're coming back to it, but unfortunately they're kind of not really um, elevate the feud any further. It's just these two guys just punching each other all the time, which, um, okay, it looks good for a couple of times, but what you see it every week, it just doesn't really seem to make sense for me to film to continue to do that. We need a bit more depth for this feud to continue if it's gonna continue any further. For me, there has to be one winner on this particular match. It has to be Kevin Owens. I think Kevin Owens is ready to move himself up the card a little bit further, and I think a victory here is gonna do that. Whether he's gonna win cleanly or not, not entirely convinced, but um, I certainly think that it could be a very interesting match should it uh, go down that way. Um, good look and see if there are any more matches that I may or may not have missed out. It looks like I've covered everything, which means we've only got the main event to go, which is going to be the triple threat match, the Shield triple threat match, uh, which is going to be Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. So that is your triple threat main event match here. Um, for Battleground. It's going to be very interesting to see what is going to happen here because, to be brutally honest, we're not actually sure how this is going to go. Roman Reigns has made his return, by the way. He returned at a live event uh, last night, so Roman Reigns is back doing uh, on the road with WWE, doing what he does. So uh, we've seen for the first time, is he going to come back as a face or is he going to come back as a heel? This is a big question. Will there be a promo leading up to the match where we get a clear indication? I'm not so convinced. I think if there's going to be any character, character change, we'll see that on Raw. Now, of course, we have Dean Ambrose on SmackDown as the WWE Champion. We have Rollins and Reigns on Raw. So technically, it's a one-time gig. Or is it? Rumour has it there's only going to be one WWE Champion. And the WWE Champion, the Women's Champion, and the Tag Team Champions are going to be on both shows for the meantime. Because they're not actually going to extend or bring more championships for the time being. The rumour has it that there won't be at least a second World Championship until after SummerSlam. Which then makes me think for my prediction. What is going to happen here? Are we going to have a clean one person victory or are we not? Now, for me, Dean Ambrose needs to win the match because otherwise his title reign seems just um, almost like a, a passing of the guard while Roman Reigns was away. It, it wouldn't feel like it was a genuine title hold and reign. So I would like to see Dean Ambrose win the match. I think it would be good going forward. The champion could be on Raw as well, which means they can add just that little bit more star power onto Monday nights each and every week, just until they actually get to SummerSlam and then they can put Dean Ambrose uh, involved back. The other um, thing that could happen is maybe Seth Rollins could win or Roman Reigns just come back and win the belt. But for me as well, an interesting thing, if they want to continue this going forward, um, where there was the one champion and they want to have Raw and SmackDown involved in a match at SummerSlam, they could have a false finish where maybe two guys pin one guy. Maybe Dean Ambrose and Rollins get the pin or maybe Reigns and Ambrose get the pin on Rollins and we see a free count and we see a false finish. Uh, of course, it would be a, a very bad way to end a pay-per-view, but um, this was done, I believe, with a triple threat match with Austin, The Undertaker and Kane back in 1998, and this was a way that they kind of got the belt off Austin um, because they had Kane and The Undertaker both pin uh, Steve Austin at the same time. Um, so it could be very interesting if they went down that route. Um, I have seen a rumour that uh, potentially the Elimination Chamber could be coming in for SummerSlam this year. I have seen as well potentially rumours that all three of these guys are going to win this match. And I have seen as well that it could be Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins as the main event for the title at SummerSlam. For me, I'm going to say that I predict that the Elimination Chamber will be the way they're going to go. Now this means that we would then potentially get the false finish. Or we would have a predicament where Dean Ambrose has won the match and we can get, say, Stephanie and Mick Foley complaining that the World Championship is not on Raw. So we kind of get our Elimination Chamber match then built up for the pay-per-view. Who would be in the match then? Or well, we'd get six superstars. So the rumour had it before, whether this would still be the case now, we'd have Dean Ambrose of SmackDown, we would have John Cena and AJ Styles of SmackDown as well, and we'd have three people from Raw, which means we'd have Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns to continue from the Shield Triple Threat. And the other rumour was Kevin Owens, which is why I predicted Kevin Owens to win the match against Sami Zayn, so that he could come away from Sami Zayn just for the time being. Maybe even put Sami Zayn on the shelf with one of his power bombs on the side rope like he did before, to put Sami Zayn out of SummerSlam, and then we can really build up a six-man elimination chamber match. It would be a very exciting way to go, and then of course maybe after that we then would actually see someone from Raw actually winning the title. Maybe then we could see Rollins or Reigns win the title and SmackDown then 
they can have a world heavyweight championship afterwards. It could be an indication of where they could go from this, but this is certainly uh, an exciting route they could go. Um, certainly for me, from a creative standpoint, I think that uh, the double pin would make the most sense for this going forward, because then we could see Dan Ambrose or not really a clear champion, um, which would be kind of nice because, you know, we then would have kind of the belt up in the air for a few weeks, and this then would really make sense to put the Elimination Chamber match together. But if someone's going to win the match, for me, I feel it has to be Dean Ambrose that wins just for another few weeks to hold the belt, and then maybe at SummerSlam, maybe he might lose it then. Whether it be a Raw versus SmackDown match, we're not quite sure. Of course, we're going to get Brock versus Autumn, which is a Raw versus SmackDown match at SummerSlam. So maybe the big four pay per views, we might actually see Raw versus SmackDown matches, and at the other events, that's when we see the distinct Raw cards and distinct SmackDown cards. So that's basically uh, the feeling going forward then. The commentary team should be a very interesting battleground as well because we know we've got a new Raw announced team, we know we've got a new SmackDown announced team. How is that going to play into pay-per-views? Uh, will be very interesting to see, particularly on this particular one anyway. We know after this we'll get the Raw announced teams for the Raw pay-per-views and the SmackDown for the SmackDown pay-per-views and for their the respective matches will have their respective teams. So what's going to happen tonight will be very interesting. I would love to see Corey Graves actually get a go this evening, although I do think it's going to be Cole JBL and Saxton, they're going to be doing Battleground just for this time. One more swung song all together. So that's been my Battleground preview and predictions for you there. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been quite a long video, uh, but, but please subscribe to the channel right now and uh, like and share the videos. If you agree with any of these predictions or would like to see any of the ideas go forward, if you disagree even, it'd be even better. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Um, I would eventually like to see Seth Rollins as the champion, by the way. I'd like to throw that out there now. But, uh, and I'd love to see as well a heel turn for Roman Reigns come back as the monster heel and Seth Rollins actually then eventually turn face on the Raw brand. But uh, one can dream that's one is going with the heart and not with the head. You know how WWE plays these things. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens. But let me know what you think in the comments section anyway. And uh, you've been watching Steve Chats Wrestling, hashtag SCW, right here on YouTube.com. Thank you for choosing the channel and choosing the video. And remember to subscribe.